are such an asshole. All right, let's get to it because work doesn't end. Where'd it go? I had it here a second ago. I had it. Here we go. Clary test. Alex writes, hey, Cappy, can you do a Clary test on Sean Parker? I'm like, who's Sean Parker? And I looked him up and um, I had no idea. One, he looks incredibly young for his age. Two, I didn't know he was the Napster guy, of which I have fond memories. Uh, probably because it was the mid-90s, late-90s? No. Late-90s, early aughts. And that's just because you got free music. Um, but you guys remember burning a CD for a girl you like? Huh? Huh? Those days are long gone, huh? <laughs> I remember making tapes for girls. That was That was more laborious. Um, so if he's, oh, well, he's maybe 19 or 20. So he's a, a wunderkind. Sean Parker, born 79, American entrepreneur and philanthropist, most notable for co-founding the file sharing computer service Napster and serving as the first president of the social networking website, Facebook. He also co-founded Plaxo Causes, Airtime.com and Brigade, an online platform for civic engagement. He is the founder and chairman of the Parker Foundation with focuses on life sciences, global public health, and civic engagement. The tragedy that now he's worth 2.4 billion, but the tragedy that uh, him all the way up to the likes of Bill Gates and oh Warren Buffett, and they, they create these non they, they build up all this massive wealth. Do they invest it and start new companies and employ people and produce good? No, we piss it away on charity. Look at all the trillions we spent to not help people. Like they didn't notice that I know I don't know, maybe his nonprofit. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna assume because the last time a nonprofit did its job was the March of Dimes, which was what 70, 80 years ago. Has a nonprofit solved any problems? It hasn't. Gee. Like, don't you look at the federal government, like in the United States since 1965? We wasted how many trillions? Tens of trillions, arguably a hundred trillion adjusted for inflation, and we still didn't help out people. Gee, I wonder if charity works. Cappy's charity would be a swift kick in the ass and the stick and the threat of starvation. Like, what, you're going to lock me up and, and not feed me? Like, no, we're not going to do a darn thing. We're going to let you be. And so you're so lazy, you won't work up for even food or shelter. We'll just let you be homeless and starving. And then inevitably, you'll develop a work ethic because you don't want to die. And that's how you cure poverty. But what do I know? I'm just an economist. I'm just a caveman. Eh, no one's going to get that one. Okay, early life. <clears throat> uh, Parker was born in Virginia. A TV advertising broker and Bruce Parker, U.S. Governor of OCI. He came from wealth. Came from wealth. When Parker was seven, father taught him how to program on the Atari 800 because his father was invested. Uh, Parker's father, who put his family before his entrepreneurial dreams, told Parker, if you're going to take... Look at that. That's the greatest dad ever. Parker, you better hug your dad. Your dad is a real father. Here, if you're going to take risks, take them before you have a family. In his teens, Parker's hobbies were hacking and programming. One night while hacking into the network of a Fortune 500 company, Parker was unable to log out after his father confiscated his computer keyboard because his IP address was exposed. FBI agents tracked down the 16-year-old. All right. All right. Oh, little, little, no, he'll never admit this to his son, but a little tear of pride. Yeah, just with the FBI, like, is it? he went right back to the offices. Let me tell you what my son did. And he was beaming with, he couldn't admit it, but he was beaming with pride. Uh, since Parker was under 18, he was sent to his community service. Education. He attended Oakton High School in Virginia for two years before transferring to Chantilly. High school senior. While there, Parker wrote a letter to school administrator, persuaded them to count the time he spent coding the computer lab as a foreign language. That legit. This guy's smart. I already want to have a beer with him. I think he'd be bored with me. I don't think he'd, he'd be like, I'm like down here. Uh, consequently, towards the end of Parker's senior year, he was mostly writing code and starting companies. He graduated in 98 while still in high school. He interned for Mark Pincus, the CEO of Zynga, at Pincus's Washington, D.C. startup freeloader. Won the Virginia State Computer Science Center for developing a web crawler and was recruited by the CIA. By his senior year in high school, Parker was earning more than 80000 a year through various projects, but no girls would touch me. He could still get late. No, I'm kidding. I'm adding that part because girls are like, ew, grody, computer square. 
enough to convince his parents to allow him to skip college and pursue his career as an entrepreneur. He skipped college. He's smart enough. Here we go. Here, here's a word, boys and girls. Here's a word. This is the future of education. You want education to be free? Here it is. In his childhood, Parker was an avid reader, which was the beginning of his lifelong autodidactism, which means he taught himself. Now that we have the internet, you don't have to go to school anymore to get knowledge. You do not need teachers or professors, which is why, once again, you heard it here first, and I have proof going back years ago, the best that you want to make education free, what you do is get the federal government to have a uh, national certification board where you test out and get the equivalent to a bachelor's degree and you pass a law that forces employers to treat those certifications as the equivalent of actual bachelor's degrees. <clears throat> I would argue they're superior because you're not dicking around wasting your time with prereqs. And now you could go on the internet, teach yourself, take a test, get your bachelor's equivalent, and then you apply for jobs. And does that cost you anything? No. Do you have to go to a campus? We could house a lot of poor people with all those college campuses and buildings, don't you think? All of them nestled in metro areas. <clears throat> Maybe the state comes in and says, well, we're selling it to a developer. Bye. But what would all the privileged suburbanite childrens do if they couldn't go to the colleges because they're all worth with widow childrens and college is just a big babysitting operation to extend childhood to give them a fake piece of paper to say, I am so smart. Graduate from college, I did. Like when I'm president, I will ban all graduation. Congratulations, graduation cards. Congratulations. That's You didn't do anything. You just sat there and regurgitated shit to your teachers and your professors. You haven't gotten a job. You haven't paid back your student loans. Like, there would be no congratulations. You're like you get a job. Oh, congratulations on your first job. Now you're now you're an adult. But this this what it is essentially is a birthright spoiled Americans. Both of the suburbs and the ghetto and the barrio and the trailer park all think they're entitled to is the college experience. At the expense of the taxpayer. So you can make believe you're intelligent people when 80% of you are not. And if you don't believe me, look up the percent of people who major in worthless crap. By the way, <clears throat> let's talk about the two books. Worthless, The Young Prince's Indispensable Mind to Choosing the Right or Guide to Choosing the Right Major, and Curse of the High IQ, which I'm sure Sean might relate to if he ever watches this. I know he's he's not savvy enough. He's like, have we just made education free by donating more money? He's brilliant in IT like Bill Gates, but then when it comes to actually advancing society, if we just gave people more money. Uh, enough to convince his parents to skip college. Uh, several media profiles refer to Parker as a genius. What do you mean? Like refer, he is. He considers his time at Napster be his college education, calling it Napster University, since he became well-versed in intellectual property law, corporate finance, and entrepreneurship. Uh, ventures. <clears throat> yeah, Sean Fanning. I remember him. Uh, when Park was 15, he met 14-year-old Sean Fanning over the internet, where the two bonded over topics such as theoretical physics and hacking. See, girls, like, he's he's in good shape. He looks really young, and he's kind of a handsomeish man if he, he needs to work out a little bit. <clears throat> but he's worth $2.4 billion. Let me guess. Is he married? Did any girl like actually give him the time of day spouse? All right. He got married in 2013. He's got two kids. All right. Good for you. Um, oh, I bet you he'd love to go to his 10 year reunion. If they even have those. Uh, a few years later, Parky Fanny attended Northeastern University, co-founded Napster Free Foundation, uh, raised the initial 50,000 Napster in 20 uh, in June, 1999, within a year, served had 10 million users opposed by record labels. Boo, 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 lawsuits, Napster, fastest growing business of all time. Guys, remember LimeWire? Huh? Huh? Ah, good times. Good times. I brought you the CD. It's got some great jazz. I'm more into like Britney Spears. Does it have any Britney Spears? I like Britney Spears. She's so pretty. I'll ignore her stupidity. All right, I'll burn one with Britney Spears. You know the song she sang, like, oh, look at me. Um, a chick with tits and look at me flash them at you that song you know that was the really popular and then like hey i'm a slut look at me look at my butt that was a little bit more of a snappy you guys that was that was back in the late 90s you guys didn't 
Oops, she did it again. Uh, philanthropy, um, five cancer, cancer. That's good. Uh, allergies. He's donating to that. Malaria. All right, maybe he isn't donating money to bullshit. All right, uh, ten million grant to autoimmune research. That's good. Code America. I think he donated to the Clinton Foundation. <laughs> Do you want you make your money count? He just wanted to go diddle kids. Which one do you want? Uh, active supporter of groups, crimes, uh, blah, blah, blah. causes, Facebook, social media, doing 50 million, 60,000 nonprofits, <clears throat> 600 million life science, global public, civic engagement, takes a very large challenges, combining insight, capital science, blah, 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 blah. cancer immunotherapy. I wonder why he focused on like, cancer so much. Like, did he have someone that he loved die of cancer? Donations and act. Here we go. He favored Democrats and progressive causes as their campaign of gun control is spoken out in favor of high taxes, particularly wealthy and super wealthy. Well, and in favor of higher capital gains tax. Well, then donate your money, man, to the government, not to nonprofits. So he's a big lefty. Um, popular color. Okay. So let's go through this here. Uh, he's he's still working. Um, didn't major in stupid stuff. Doesn't have a worth. Uh, uh, didn't come from wealth. Oh no, he did come from wealth. So he has a he has a point against him. Did major in worthless stuff. Real world working. I, I, I'm I'm okay with him as long as he works up the money to donate to what a charity causes. That's fine. Would I like to have a beer with him? This is a weird. This is a weird ruling I'm going to give here. I would absolutely love to have a beer with this guy. <clears throat> absolutely. Should he run for office? No. He said, "Well, wait. He carried his weight. Yes, but the problem is." He is like all well-intended leftists. He thinks it's just going to be more money. And it's that naivete, this, this, and he's going to probably make things worse. Like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation didn't help out Africa. They just extended, unfortunately, poor people's lives to have more kids to make more poor people. Right. They, they, it's, it's like, no, look, dude, if you have that big blind spot in your logic of how economics and wealth and getting people out of poverty works, that I mean, after literally what? Coming up on 60 years of the Great Society and probably approaching somewhere around $100 trillion in today's dollars to help out poor, it didn't work. When do you, and if you can't say, wait, we got to rethink this and at least make the jump to libertarianism. Or to just stop throwing money at things and we need to tax the most productive members of society. No. No, because your solution has been tried for five plus decades and it doesn't work. So no, I don't want you running for office. I don't. I mean, at least he's somewhat honest in that he donates money to charity. Okay, but if you're for higher taxes, I don't know why you do it. Look, if you believe the government, high taxes, you the government is going to solve these problems, then there's nothing stopping you ultra wealthy people to fork over 90% of your income, your wealth, not your income, your wealth. You just said he's for capital gains. Well, cash some in, baby. Give some to the Department of Education because government schools work great. And by the way, why don't we get some government housing while we're at it? You know, and that's that's why I don't want him running for office because he's just going to piss away. Look, he's got two point four billion dollars that can do a lot of good if deployed the right way. I would argue creating, starting new companies, which it sounds like he's doing, advancing new technologies. Okay, curing cancer and fighting immunity. Okay, that that'll help out too. But like, you really want the rate of return? You really want to help out society? Employ some people. Start a company. Start, a, start a, a, an institution to train young people to become tradesmen who show up on time and, and budget correctly. I mean, that's going to help out. It's not sexy stuff. Get, get people in poor parts of America, whether that's the trailer park or the ghetto, to go to diesel mechanic school, to go to welding school. No. You're going to give it to the Democrat Party. And then we're going to have EBT and welfare. All right. <clears throat> Gee, I wonder how that will go. <laughs> but hey, it feels good, right? And you're popular when you vote Democrat. Uh, all right. I didn't do the older brother, did I? 
We have obese homeless people because they abuse good-hearted people. Right. Yeah. All right. 